Hey, what's up? My name's Eric, and welcome to part three of our 2x4 furniture series. All right, so now that we're all acquainted, let's get to building this stool. Now, I think that most of the furniture that you see people make 2x4s with is... Shh. Shh. Trying to record the voiceover. It's crap. So the goal of this whole series we're doing is to bring a fresh look at 2x4s and create some unique designs and hopefully spark some creativity along the way. 2x4s are the perfect medium for people to get into woodworking as a hobby, and it's actually how I first started with my own tools. They're super cheap, super easy to work with, and that's all great. I guess the problem that I see is that most people are copying the exact same designs over and over again and really not even being creative with what they're building. So in this third and final part of our 2x4 series, we're going to build a stool with some interesting angles and practice some new skills. And to make things easier to follow along, let's hop into SketchUp so you can see how things are going to come together with the stool. So here's a sketch of the stool. Now the top is basically just a square, so let's get that out of the way. The interesting part in this build is the legs. Now these legs are splayed outward and then joined with a half lap joint. And don't worry, it sounds more complicated than it actually is, and we'll go more into it later. But now that you've got an idea of what we're going to do and how the stool kind of looks, let's head back into the workshop. Now, earlier on, you saw me break down some stock into rough size and cross it off these step-by-step -step plans that we have. And if you want those plans, they are available down the link below, as well as the SketchUp model too. So let's start off by grabbing the pieces for the tabletop. Now, 2x4s have rounded edges on them, so I'll start by ripping those off to get some nice square lumber. These are all going to get glued up to form the seat of the stool, and to keep all those boards flat while the glue sets up, I'm going to use some call boards. Nothing fancy here, just a couple scrap pieces wrapped in packing tape so that the glue doesn't stick to them. And you could definitely use something like biscuits, dominoes, or dowels to aid in keeping the boards flat, but the glue up this small is fairly easy to keep flat, so I'm going to skip all those fancy measures here. However, I'm not going to skip peeling the glue off of the silicone spreader, so hit that thumbs up button down below to let us know if you'd like to see more weird, satisfying stuff like this. After the glue cures, I bring it down to its final size and give it a nice sanding so I don't get any splinters, you know, down under. Now, let's head to the footrests. These guys are probably the easiest part. They're just a one inch by one inch piece, but you need to make sure to make them before we do any of these other leg parts. And you'll see why a little bit later. With the footrests finished, let's jump back into the model to take a look at the legs. So like I mentioned earlier, these legs are gonna be joined using a half lap joint. And the reason I'm doing this is to create a really large surface for all the glue to set up and that'll make the joint really strong without the need for any fasteners like screws. And to attach the footrests to the legs, I'm just going to cut some dados. Now this might seem difficult, but just hang out for a minute and watch how simple everything is. And remember, this is just a 2x4 project, so even if you screw it up, it costs like a dollar to remake another leg. So. Just give it a try and work on a new skill. Let's head back to the workshop. The leg pieces first need to be cut down to 25 inches. With the length dialed in, I'll mark at a five degree angle. 
And in order to cut this large taper safely, I'm actually gonna grab our DIY joiner and taper sled. All I have to do is adjust the fence on the sled to line up the mark to the edge, and then I can just run it through the saw to create a perfect, repeatable taper. While I cut these tapers, I want to remind you to check us out over on Patreon. Patreon is the perfect way to support our channel and get some awesome rewards too. No pressure, but, you know, check it out and see if it's right for you. To give the legs that splayed look, I need to make a 10 degree cut on the bottom of each leg. Doesn't look like much, but you definitely cannot skip this step. Now to join the footrest to the legs, we're going to cut a dado in the legs. Dados are super easy to cut by lining up one side of the cut with the blade and then tightening down the stop block. On the opposite side, I inserted the footrest piece between the leg and the stop block, which is why we needed to cut those earlier. I can then remove the footrest and insert a drill bit that's the exact same thickness as a saw blade. And I can just hog out all of the wood to get a perfect fit to where you almost don't even need glue to hold things together. And the top of the legs needs a matching miter cut so that it's parallel with the bottom of the legs. And before moving any further with those legs, we need to cut the upper legs down to their final width, but keep the length oversized for right now. I'll mark out the lap joints and then remove all of the material on the table saw using the miter gauge. If you're new to our channel, we want to say welcome and consider subscribing. We put out a new project video each and every week, and we would love to have you join our community. Now, I worked retail in college, and I hate trying to sell things to people, and hate when people try to force things on me. So, really, just do whatever you want. We'd love to have you click that notification bell to help us grow our channel, but if you just want to check out this project and move on with your life, that's cool too. With the lap joints cut, I marked out where the upper legs needed to be trimmed off to get that perfect fit. And all that's left now is to glue everything together. If you have any ideas for future projects or perhaps a future series, let us know down in the comments below. We read every single one that comes through and you'll always hear back from us and we might even feature your comment in a future video. Oh yeah. And a last minute decision before the seat was attached to the base, I decided to use a roundover bit on the router to get a nice soft edge. All that's left to do now is attach the top to the base with some screws. As we wrap up this 2x4 series, I have to say, it was pretty fun. And are 2x4s ever going to be as accurate and as stable as quarter sound white oak? No, but that's not the whole point. 2x4s are a perfect way for people to get started in woodworking, but I want to encourage people to come up with their own unique designs. Designs that mask the recognizable shape of a 2x4. Designs that show creativity. Designs that aren't just taking the easy way out. Really? Just designs that don't look like stool. <laughs>